Hi, I'm Rob Pate, uh, the director of Hairspray, and I have a few of the cast members with me. Uh, to my right is Holly. Uh, next to Holly is Regine, and followed by Rob. Uh, Holly plays Penny, uh, Regine plays Motormouth, and Rob plays Link. Um, the show will, will be at the Bergdorf uh, starting May, the first week in May, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but I have a few questions uh, to talk about the show. Uh, in general, the show is about a, a, uh, an upbeat, uh, wonderful uh, Tracy Turnblack who, with her spirit and in song and dance, um, brings a community together. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, let's start asking questions. So, uh, saying it's a lot of fun, um, uh, how have rehearsals been? Uh, how did you find them going? I think they're, they're going for, you know, very well. Um, you know, getting to know people and learning how, you know, everyone flows with, you know, everyone's different when it comes to acting and singing and all their different styles. So getting to, to know people and learn their styles and kind of see how you fit with them and all that is, it's, it's really great <laughs> to know people that way. Yeah, I mean, once you catch your breath, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it shows some animal. Like, you think, like, hairspray, it's gonna be fun. And, like, it is, it's so much fun, but it's very tiring. Um, it's very dance heavy um, and vocally tough, too. So, doing them both at the same time, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I've had a ton of fun. I mean, I've loved it. The cast has a really great sense of community and family and that's always nice to have for a couple months on end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you bring up something interesting. Uh, what I've noticed and one of the reasons why I do like Hairspray is it brings you back to musicals that uh, we don't see anymore, which is the dance and song together. Uh, now it's either dance or song, but Hairspray brings us back to, to those lost days of the musicals. Um, what's, your, what's your favorite part of the show? show. Honestly, I love the finale where everyone comes together and just to honestly make a joyful noise. <laughs> we're singing, we're dancing, it's a lot of energy, colors, and I just think it's, it's really great. I love the finale. Rob? Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Nicest Kids because, uh, I mean, it's so much fun, first of all, but then also it's, a, it's great to see all the different kids developing their characters. I mean, like, we're all in one number and we're singing the same notes and dancing the same moves, but each different kid has a story. I mean, we're all friends, but each kid is different. You can see that in everyone's face, and I think that's the most interesting part of that song. Here. Think about it. Holly? Uh, I really like um, Mama Welcome to the 60s uh, because that sense of um, familial ties and that mother-daughter bond that you see, that's one of my favorite relations to see on the stage is one of the biggest things that I empathize with, and I love seeing that kind of maternal bond almost reversed for the number, yeah. and I think that's really important for uh, teenagers to see, for mothers to see. I think it's a really great representation of family and what it means to be a mother and a daughter. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. Um, <laughs> who here has seen the original John Waters movie? Like Ricky Lake? With yeah. Ricky Lake yeah. and, and, yeah. and yeah. Sonny Bono. And Javai. <laughs> or was she had the copper dress, I think, yeah. at the end? Okay. Yeah. My mom's seen it. I have really seen it. Where they did the brooch. Yeah. And well, Divine played. Divine? <laughs> played yeah. And, and uh, uh, Deborah Harry. Mm -hmm. Blondie. Mm -hmm. um, how does, how did, from, since you saw it, mm -hmm. how do you feel that this compares? Because the original was not a musical. Right. Um, well, Obviously, the music, <laughs> the addition of, of music to it, you know, that is a big thing, making it different. Um, and I feel like there's some parts when you, you get to know certain characters on the stage that you just see as background people in the film. And um, I think that, you know, that adds a lot more dimension to it when you get to know more, not just, you know, the, the principal actors but, or characters rather, but the, the background as well, where you, you, you know, you see the, say, the kids in detention and you get to, you hear them speak and you, even if they have one or two lines, you can kind of understand where they're coming from uh, and the, their background, why they would think that way and what would make them say that line. Mm -hmm. um, 
this show um, represents a lot of social biases too. I mean, uh, in as in as fun as it is, there there is an underlying theme, and and uh, two of the themes is segregation and body type. Uh, <laughs> Do you think, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not secretive about it either. <laughs> um, but do you think that the, the song and the dance and the upbeatness of the show helps present these items in a, in a better and more informative light? Well, I think the fun, upbeat tempo of the show keeps the audience interested and it keeps them engaged. But then you have a song like I Know Where I've Been, with, and given the like very positive, like, attitude of all the songs up until that point, I think that makes it even more powerful. Like, like the bad things in life make the great things that much greater. And I think that same concept applies to this show. All the nice, like, fun, dancing, like, upbeat songs, they kind of make the, the slower, powerful ones stand out more. Good contrast. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And also, no one, I, I, don't, I believe not a lot of people like to be lectured. <laughs> so when it comes to, to you know, you know, learning lessons, um, they take it better when it's in a context, you know, like the show, you know, upbeat song dance. That's why, you know, like children's television, so popular. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I kind of see it that way. Yeah, no, absolutely. I definitely think you need a way to relate to the public. Mm -hmm. And I think the very fact that uh, this production is a spectacle of sorts. I don't think it takes away from that. I think, if anything, it makes uh, it more relatable to the audience. I think it allows it to have a better, um, a better way to create a sense of communal awareness of the issues it brings up. Great, great. Um, so, so, uh, so, uh, how to say this? Um, do you think these issues are? I guess, I guess what you are saying is that these issues are there, uh, but should the audience kind of overthink them? Are they, uh, or to, to contrast the light and the fun with it through the other issues, um, I guess the feel of the movie, uh, the, movie <laughs> the feel of the play uh, does present these issues, uh, but what I see and I feel is that it shouldn't be overthought but as you said, not lectured, it just comes in right under the radar. So, um, uh, who are you gonna come and invite to see the show? Um, well, really just my family. <laughs> uh, I have to, uh, to do some stuff <laughs> with, uh, with um, someone of another race, and my grandparents are very conservative people, so that's going to be very interesting. <laughs> oh! <laughs> but remember, it comes right under the radar. It comes right under the radar, no. nothing too racy, no, but it's going to be interesting. You won't notice anything. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Um, definitely family. I've got, you know, a few friends coming over. <laughs> so, yeah. You know what's been interesting? Up until this point, I haven't had to invite anyone. I, they just say, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I have Harris Fair rehearsal. Or, I love Harris Fair. I'm coming. <laughs> and so, like, I mean, like, it's been very easy that way. But, uh, yeah, we have a decent amount of people coming from. Well. Mm -hmm. Cool. Question. Uh, how much fun do you think the audience is going to have? As much as you've had, at least as much as you've had? Doing the parts and doing the show? Well, I think they're going to have a lot of fun watching us. I think they're going to be very bitter that they're not up here with us. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, there's that to look out for. But I think, I think they're going to have a great time, and I'm really excited to see their reaction. Oh, yeah, okay. they're definitely going to be singing and dancing along with us, especially <laughs> if they know, <laughs> they know this, the song and they know the show. Okay. Uh, we'll take a break now, and when we come back, we'll have a few other cast members from Hapsburg. It is estimated that over 70 million stray and feral cats currently roam the streets, alleyways, and backyards of the United States. Furry Hearts Rescue believes that all cats deserve a safe and caring home. Feral cats arise from the throwaway cats that roam our streets, alleys, fields, backyards, and school grounds in search of food and shelter. That's why Furry Hearts Rescue has devised with Maplewood Township the TNVR program, Trap, Neuter, Vaccinate, Return. This will produce the feral cat colonies without harming the cats themselves. 
Virtually everyone in the field of feline welfare agrees that the number of cats born each year exceeds the number of homes available, and most of these kittens aren't coming from own cats. Therefore, it is essential that efforts to target the cat population will target the stray and feral cat colonies. And there are tons of benefits from the TNVR, not only smaller feral cat colonies, fewer public nuisance problems, and the decreased shelter enthusiasm rates. But also, animal control costs will lower, there will be improved lives for stray and feral cats, and there will be more rabies shots administered. Let's, Let's fix this! this. Um, I've got a few other cast members with me. Uh, to my right is Anit. She is a, she plays a dynamite and a and a detention kid. Um, next to Anit is Lucinda, and this is Tracy. And sitting next to Tracy is Eric, and Eric plays Tracy's mom. <laughs> um, start talking. In, in earlier we we talked about how the show presents a lot of social issues. Um, segregation and body type. Um, the show has a non-traditional person as the lead. Uh, how do you think that this, uh, why, uh, why do you think that makes this that special? Why do you think doing that makes this type of show special? I think it makes the show really special because it's, it's, an, it's an issue that we still have today, so it's relatable for a lot of people. So I think it's nice for those types of people who are trying to get into theater or, you know, who um, are in the public and seen a lot to, like, kind of feel better about themselves and say, hey, you know what, there are cards for me out there, or, you know, things like that. So I, I do think it's a, it's a very special show for that reason, because it really is the only one, yeah. really, where the lead is the non-traditional ingenue. So I think right. it's really special. Yeah. Um. This is an interesting one. The set, the song, and the dance, all, and, and, and the script, and, and everything about it, and clothing, uh, reflect late 1950s, early 1960s. So, when you're now in your character, do you feel that you're back in 1962? Yeah, you know, I always think it's, it's very difficult to do a period piece, like any period piece, if you haven't lived in that era. You know, you really have to do some research at least I do, you know, what life was like back then, you know. Um, it's only been 50 years, pretty much, 50 few years, but things have changed a lot. You know, what's cool has changed, what fashion is has changed, you know. When you're thinking of, of characters like, um, like Seaweed or, or Link, you, know, you kind, of, kind of have to look at what was cool back then, Sam Cooke or, um, you know, like Bobby Darren, you know, those, those, that's what was cool back then, you know, those were, those were the, the hot you know, singers and the, the cool guys, you know, and so it's totally different than what this is, and these kids are all like in high school, so they, they really don't know what that's like unless they do some research. So. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I'm finding that as the director, and even choreographing it, I'm finding that as uh, one of the challenges to get over, I mean, uh, as one of the prop pieces, I pulled out a camera, and it's an old brown, which was 1950, and, and they're looking at it going, what do I look through? Because you don't you don't bring it up to your face. Right. What you do is you look down into it. <laughs> so it, it's really interesting. And, and a lot of the uh, the Peyton Place. I was that's what I was gonna say, the the Peyton Place thing, trying to explain to us what that was. Right. And yeah, there's a lot of like, references that, that's, that people don't get. Uh, what a book. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a TV, uh, show. TV show. <laughs> it was a sexy TV show. Apparently we just <laughs> We were like, okay, so it's just the Fifty Shades of Grey of that time. And they are like, oh, okay, now we kind of get it, all right. I think you can make this work. Yeah, even, even the dancing, I mean, it, one of the things I liked growing up, my father uh, was very much into the doo-wop and, and that. So uh, putting together a lot of those dances and, and, and the pieces was really a lot of fun. Um, uh, why do you think the mother is always played by a man? Well, to me, I mean, I think that it honors the original, um, John Waters' original. Um, everything that he had done up to Hairspray had been a vehicle for Divine, who was the star of every show. So before it was a musical, it was a film, a John Waters film, uh, that was always, she always played uh, a mother or a wife or whatever in, in her 
movies. So um, I think that when they do the musical, it honors his original vision. And it's always fun. I mean, you know, there's nothing funnier than a 300-pound yeah. man in a dress, <laughs> you know? Um, but you think, I, I think of um, the, the era, too. And early TV, Milton Berle. Milton, right. That was, one of the, the, that was wholesome family fun, you know? Dressing in drag, you know? Right. And, right. Uh, right. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it kind of makes me think of British Panto as well. Right, sure. And that's, that's a, I've actually done one here, this, I've done a few here. Uh -huh. um, and one of the staples of that is that there's always a guy in drag, and he's, mm -hmm. you know, either somebody's mother, or right. an aunt, or right. a stepmother, and it's usually somebody who's a little bit bigger, right. and is very flamboyant, and is just there to just be funny. And this is a fun show, it's a funny show, and I think that that is something that is just great for this. It's like Monty Python. Yeah. It was all male yeah. cast, it was all true, you yeah. know, and even, you know, there's like Some Like It Hot, and Tootsie, and Mrs. Doubtfire, it's all, yeah. it's, it's just it's good fun. You know? Right, right. <laughs> it's a high energy show, too. Yes, yes. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every, every, after the show is over, you come off right. stage going, okay, rest. <laughs> <laughs> I need some oxygen now. <laughs> who, who do you think the, uh, is the bravest character? Is it Tracy, Motormouth, Penny, Seaweed, Corny, Link? I think it's Tracy for a couple reasons. Um, since there are so many underlying themes in the show, I think it's brave of her to begin with that she wants to pursue a career that people don't believe she'll ever be able to do because of her size and because of the way she looks. She gets turned down a lot, but she still maintains her like positive energy and she's still optimistic throughout the whole thing. Um, and then, you know, even with Link, like, loving someone who doesn't necessarily love you back at first, and she keeps at it until she finally wins him over. So I feel like she has a lot of, t there's a lot in the show that she has to be brave for, um, before we even get to segregation. Mm -hmm. So, right. you know, so I think, I think she's challenged a lot um, on her character journey throughout the show in many different ways. Mm -hmm. I think... I do agree that Tracy is definitely the bravest character, but I think in terms of the person who has the most at stake, I would actually say that's Motormouth. Because mm. she, um, she's been building this empire for supposedly, apparently her entire life. You know, she's raised two kids on her own, she owns the record shop, she works for a broadcasting company, and that, for a woman of color at that time, is a really amazing thing to be doing all of that on her own. And the fact that all of that can be jeopardized just because she wants her son to be able to dance, you know, whenever he wants. Like, she could, she could lose everything, she wouldn't be able to feed her kids, it, you know, the whole, the whole community, the black community in that area depends on her and really looks up to her. All the kids that come into the record shop, that's their place, their safe haven. It's sort of like in the detention scene, this is where the kids can finally have fun. But in the record shop, they don't have, you know, a principal peering in, people telling them, oh, they can't do this, you can't do that, you're too stupid, you're in special ed. And at the record shop, they can just be who they want. And Motormouth is the one who is encouraging them and nurturing them in the way that a mother would. Mm. So I think for that, she, I think she definitely has a lot at stake. Mm. Um, who are you inviting us to come see the show? <laughs> well, I have a large community of theater friends and uh, kind of like Rob said earlier, you know, you just tell people they're in Hairspray and they're like, I'm coming. You know, it's it's a show that you say the word and people are like they're there. You, know? uh -huh. um, you don't have to do a lot of encouraging. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a I have a lot of family coming. Um, I actually have members from the original Hairspray cast that I first did Tracy with coming. Mm -hmm. oh. um, I have <laughs> other theater friends coming, and I actually have a lot of my students coming. Oh. So, yeah. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that I love about living in this community that there's so much art and theater is so embraced. So I've done, I've actually done a show with you, I've done a show yep. with a bunch yep. of things with other cast members, so it's really great that I can say, hey, 
Remember when we were in this show together? Well, guess what? This person that I know, that you also know, and me, we're, hey, we're both in this show, so you should come see that. So it's really great to, you know, bring people in that we've done other shows with and just get them to come because they're supporters of the arts and theater anyway. So it's great that they're getting to see this amazing production and they have a special connection because they'll know people. Um, we, we did have some group sales to elementary schools. Um, now, there's nothing, nothing is dirty in the show. Uh, there is no curse words, there's no profanity, you know, but there is a lot of innuendo. Uh, a lot of innuendo. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you think the show would be okay for school kids to come? You know, ju juxtapose innuendo with the under underpinning themes and the way the underpinning themes are presented. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I, to me, I find that if they're not old enough, they're not going to get it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's, 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 uh, they do it with cartoons and stuff too, like Disney cartoons. They put the jokes in for the parents who have yeah. to sit through it, <laughs> and it goes right over the kids' heads until they don't have to understand. But they get a lot in there too. You know, those, yeah. those kind of things. And there's a lot worse on TV. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Today, yeah. yeah. It's fine. Maybe the innuendo is kind of innocent and fun. Yes, you know, it it's is. It's not it is. offensive. And they'll find it funny whether they get it or not. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Right. They'll laugh because everybody else is going to be laughing. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> it's, it's contagious. A, and it's a good message for kids that they can, they yeah. can sort of intake and it's not, it, it doesn't, it's not so complex that the the morals and those underpinning mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. will go over their heads. So mm -hmm. that is something that is very in your face and something that uh, they'll definitely be able to absorb. Yeah. Yeah. And it's something that's really relevant, like I said, in yeah. schools today, with bullying, body image. Yes. So it's a, it's a really great thing for kids to watch, especially at a young age, to see you know to see someone um, who's the lead, who's not the normal you know ingenue yeah. body type. And see them succeed, and you know, have a happy ending at the end. So, yeah. right. and there's, yeah. that, there's actually a thing in the show where where Corny's challenge about having yeah. somebody like Tracy on the show. And he's like, well, it's about time we had somebody on the show who looks like the kids who watch the show, mm -hmm. and that's that's for everybody. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Everybody yeah. can can feel uh, embraced by that, you know, and and see, I, I could be out there. You know? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And except me too, you know. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think the audience is going to say after the? They see the show. What's, what, you know, uh, one of the one of the ways I always judge a, a, a musical is the audience goes out and they're humming or they're singing or they're they're playing one or two of the songs. Now I don't know, but I think that this whole entire uh, uh, libretto or soundtrack is catchy. It's awesome. Yeah. It is. It has got great beats. It's you know it's pleasing to everybody. Right. I think, but. So what do you think the audience is going to say? I think after they stop laughing, they'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a lot of your words, you know, yeah. and, and especially, okay. especially the, uh, the final song, that's going to be fresh in their minds when yeah. they get right. tapping their way out, you know, singing the I song. mean, even after rehearsals, we're, we're you know, coming out of, of the, uh, the, the theater. The theater. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> We're coming out of the theater singing these songs and humming the tunes and it's just like it's it's it, it gets in your head and it makes you just yeah. Yeah. It's contagious. It's fun. Yes. I, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Well, this is uh, our cast and hairspray is gonna start uh, May first and we will run May first, May second, May third, May eighth, May ninth, May tenth, May fifteenth, and May sixteenth. Sundays will be at 2 p.m. Uh, Saturdays and Fridays start at 8 p.m. Uh, it's at the Bergdorf in the Maplewood, uh, in Maplewood. <laughs> and you can see, for more information, visit our uh, webpage, thestrollers.org, one word.